What is up? I'm Wanda Turtle, and today we're going to be talking about Cosmic Eclipse. We're going to look through the list and see what cards, in my opinion, are things to look out for when it comes to the competitive side of playing. There is a lot of power packed in these things, and I feel like Cosmic Eclipse is going to change the meta significantly in so many ways. So let's take a look at our first card. Again, we're looking at things not so much from a collectability or what I'm looking to pull as a collector, but this is just for things that I'm very curious in trying in PTCGO once the set drops in a couple weeks. So let's go over to our first card. We have Venusaur in Snivy GX. This one I feel like is very interesting. I think it's something that I would like to try to make it work. I ultimately don't think it's strong enough, but he has a very interesting ability. And so just start off the bat, 207 HP, the weakness to fire I think is a big deal, especially these days with just how powerful Welder is alone. Alright, but Shining, Shining Vine is very interesting. If this is your active Pokemon, I think that's the part that kills it. If they didn't have the active Pokemon clause, I feel like this thing would be amazing. But you need to be active whenever you attach a grass energy to from your hand to this Pokemon. You may choose one of your bench Pokemon and switch it to their active. So these after Guzma's gone, you know everything is around Custom Catcher. I think that card is like a the, uh, if you have a just a regular copy of it, it can sell for like ten bucks. So that card is so valuable right now, and this thing has a built-in custom two Custom Catchers. If it wasn't for the active clause, and then you know the rest of them Grass Grass. Pokemon I feel like are just too bulky. They're all around, you know, a lot of HP, high retreat cost, and things like, oh, I can heal. And I just don't think that's good enough in the meta. I feel like I'm more of a, my thought process is offense over defense. And I think that kind of makes this guy less viable. Uh, but he does have a 160 damage attack. You only need one grass. I think that's maybe keeps it alive. And then the solar blast does 50 damage to each of your bench Pokemon. When it's like, AoE like that, usually that's not good enough. There will be some situations where that's useful. Then if you have two additional energy, so a total of five, you can heal all your Pokemon. The heal again, I'm more of off, I think offense over defense. Like Mewtwo, Mew has that similar ability where you can heal everything, and I feel like that's just not used that often. So Venusaur Snivy, something to look out for. I feel like something that people will be tinkering with. I'm not that optimistic about it being top tier though. The next one is a new mechanic that I just love the idea of. There have been other things where things will buff like Deancey, Altaria, but these evolutions buff up just evolutions. Oh, this is really cool. You know, there are different types obviously, so it's not so tied to a specific type. And I feel like these ultimately, you know, you do have to evolve them and stuff like that. You need to evolve them to these these forms and you need to evolve it to the GX's because the abilities only apply to GX's. So uh, this is another one I feel like this will just create, allow for a lot of fun decks to play. Uh, I ultimately I don't think they're going to be top tier though, but let's go through them. So the Flareon to start, so essentially when you get these on the board and they can just be on your bench, they basically they power up your evolution GX's. Um, I wonder if they could have did, didn't need that GX clause um, because the, as long as they keep the evolve part but just to add a little more flexibility, but I don't think it'll make that big of a difference. But basically, Flareon will make your Evolutions GXs do 30 more damage, pretty good. Jolteon, I think Jolteon's maybe the most important one, especially if you consider like combining with a Thunder Mountain if you're using a Jolteon GX. Uh, your attacks cost one colorless, excuse me, less. And then Vaporeon, I think it's the least impressive, but these days, uh, actually any day, uh, if we turn a one hit, to a two hit, obviously that's just makes a huge difference. And then Vaporeon adds 60 HP to the max HP. So again, I love this mechanic. Uh, it's very interesting, especially in, again, you know, beyond Custom Catcher and maybe Venusaur Snipe, there's not many ways to take out your bench, bench Pokemon. Yeah, there's some things that can damage your bench, but if you're really concerned about that, Mew, bench protection. So uh, we have the three new evolutions. I just love this mechanic. And I think it'll be fun to try out. Next we have Magneton, obviously it's evolution Pokemon, uh, Magneton, usually they're like Magnezone and stuff like that, they're always about their abilities, they're usually not much of a fighter, and this one is no different, so ability, Beacon, and that's all we're going to talk about, don't worry about its attack. Once during your turn before your attack, you may choose up to three supporter cards from your deck, reveal them, put them in your hand, shuffle your deck, 
this Pokemon is now knocked out. So it's kind of like Miss Magius. Uh, this will be a little bit harder to toot up because um, they Miss Magius had that uh, those one card. I don't remember what it's called, but basically you just I think it's Dust Stone or something. Uh, but this is very, very powerful. This basically just to tutor up three supporters is really unique. I wonder if this would be very good in, uh, there's like all these different prison decks that are roaming around there. They're super annoying to face. But a lot of times you just need the supporters to get the ball rolling. And this is one way to basically grab a bunch of them out there. And then you can start doing your thing. Like the fact that it doesn't do any damage is fine. That's not how you're going to win anyways. And the fact that it's not GX, to set things up is perfect too because it's only one prize. So Magneton, another very cool card that I think will enable a lot of strategies and enhance them. Ah, this one I'm super excited about. This one I do think can be a big deal in the meta. Like some of the tag teams we're going to be talking about later are so strong and then this thing just can take out anything. So Zatu, only 80 HP, doesn't need to evolve from Natu, but don't worry about its first attack. Life Drain. Flip a coin, if heads, put damage counters on your opponent's active Pokemon till... Oh, sorry. There was some cut and paste there, or the rest of this text is missing. So remaining HP is 10. So bring your opponents down to 10 HP. All I can say is Zatu, Shrine of Punishment, boom. All tag teams are done. You do need to win the coin flip. There is a will supporter that will guarantee you win the coin flip. I'm not sure if that's the best. But I feel like, you know, a deck with Zatu's, some uh, obviously Shrine of Punishment, but you know, there's always going to be a stadium battle. You can use things like Spell Tag to guarantee the, the knockout and stuff like that. So this card is amazing. I think this thing is going to be like tag teams are just keep getting stronger. And then there are only a hand few of GXs and non GXs that can keep them in check. And I think Zatu is definitely going to be one of them, uh, even if you takes two you know you take two knockouts to set this thing up you knock out a tag team like that's three prize cards you're you're leading the race dust noir is very interesting and kind of potentially plays well with that too but i found this thing interesting and something i'm curious if people can find a way to make it work but ultimately i think it might come up a little short especially when it's a stage two but let's go through it anyway uh so it does evolve from dust clops which is from dust Gulp. 160 HP, not that much. Fainting Stamp. This is very interesting. If this Pokemon is your active Pokemon and is knocked out by damage during your opponent's attack, put four damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon anyway. So this is kind of like a built-in spell tag. Slap on another one, and it's 80 damage. You can disperse however you see fit. And then Psych Up. I do like how it's low energy cost. So if you can get this going right off the bat, he is a threat that if you knock out will just do more damage to you. Um, so it's kind of like you can't ignore him but ultimately he needs time. Psych up 60 damage during your, your next turn. So basically if you use Psych up twice, you will it will increase to 120, which for one Psychic Energy is not bad. So ultimately I feel like this card does a lot of things, none of them great, and it is a stage two, uh, but I feel like this has a lot of potential and something to keep an eye out for. Ah, Oreo, Oreo Choreo GX. This card is amazing. You know, the biggest thing here again is um, that custom catcher, you need custom, it's difficult to bring out po Pokemon from the bench. And yeah, 170 HP, the only concern there is Naganadal GX's attack that does exactly 170. Uh, so yes, you probably need some Mew protection as well, but its ability is amazing. Dedicated Dance. Uh, once during your turn before your attack, if basically if you lost a Pokemon last turn, you can draw three cards. You can only use this once per turn. That's that makes sense. I'm going to ignore its attacks because I don't think they're relevant, and that does mean that you can use this in any deck because the fact that Psychic, in my opinion, is not really relevant. But in a jam, Strafe GX, you can switch it out and then Razor Wing 80 damage. Again, I'm I'm just focused on dedicated dance entirely. So I feel like this is something that you can tech into any deck, especially ones, yeah, even like the Zatus or the potentially the Dust Noir, where it basically a deck where you're not using tag teams, where they have to knock out a lot of your Pokemon. Maybe Giratina uh, would be a pretty good one for this, uh, like some kind of Giratina Malamar deck. And basically this is just a built-in card draw engine, and I love it. Alolan Persian, the ugliest Alolan <laughs> by far. Looks like a troll Pokemon, and I think it is. 
Alolan Persian GX. Smug face, perfect name for this ability. Prevent all effects of attacks, including damage done to Pokemon done from opponent's attack team, Ultra Beast, and Pokemon with special engine. So, kind of like, um, the horse, <laughs> this name escapes me, uh, the thing that's missing is just regular GX, but instead hey, we add Ultra Beast and Pokemon with special energy. I think that there are just going to simply be decks where if this thing's on the on the field as active, like, oh, I don't know how I win. And the, the weakness to this is because of Mewtwo Mew, there are just so many power plants. Everyone needs power plants. So potentially as a rogue deck, I could see, you know, basically a bunch of these and then a bunch of stadiums. So basically you need to maintain stadium control and then this will just be like a lock. And eventually they'll use these weak attacks that do only 120 damage until you're knocked out. I kind of see this as a rogue control deck. Ultimately because of like the power plants and the lack of GX uh, protection, I don't see this you know, being super strong, I feel it being more annoying than anything else, but it will be, it is a threat in my opinion. Alright, now we're getting to some real big heavy hitters. Uh, this is what the Japanese set Alter Genesis was named after. And we have Arceus, Dialga, and Palkit. That is a, that is quite a trio right there. And they pack quite a punch as well. Let's see, Ultimate Ray. So this is kind of interesting energy so you need a water and a metal and then some one other energy 150 damage not that much but search your deck for three basic energy and attach them to your pokemon in any way you like it's kind of like pikaram so this is pikaram with awkward energy and more hp and then uh the ramp up is very flexible so if pikaram's still a thing i have to imagine this is going to be a thing and then it also packs an amazing gx ability Altered Creation GX. For the rest of the turn, basically do 30 more damage. That's not bad. Like, if you can do, if you go second and you do this turn two and you forget about its uh, powered up ability, that's not bad. Just to do 30 damage additional always. I feel like there's a lot of attacks that just come up short and then this will fix a lot of uh, basically thresholds that you need for damage. However, if you have an extra water energy attachment, and that's it. Uh, basically, whenever you knock out a Pokemon, you take an additional prize card. This changes like a lot. This will basically change all the math in your favor as far as how you get to six prizes. It's no longer of, well, I just need to focus on taking out two tag teams. Uh, now it makes you, you know, basically it just upgrades everything. So just uh, something to a lot of things that certain decks can rely on as far as the math for prize cards. Basically, this just throws all that out of the window uh, to your advantage. Next we have Naga Natal and Guzzlord GX. This one, I'm not sure this will be strong enough, but I feel like on paper this thing is very interesting, but we'll see how it goes. Naga Natal, Guzzlord, 280 HP, cool, gluttony. Uh, you may discard Pokemon from your hand if you do heal 60 damage. I'm not too crazy about the potential lore of that. It sounds like Guzzlord's eating the Pokemon that <laughs> you discarded and to heal itself, so that part's a little grim. And for Jet Pierce, 180 damage, not bad, um, but it does require two different types, and all of them are fire. And then Chaos, Chaos Order GX is basically what we're interested in. Uh, flip over your prize cards and remain face up. That's not bad. If this Pokemon has at least one energy or one extra psychic and darkness, again, those two types, uh, basically, you take two prize cards. So this is kind of like a guaranteed two prize GX attack. A um, lot of potential. I'm not sure if we'll, if uh, it's going to be as... Uh, it sounds good on paper. We'll see how it turns out. When I think about it, like basically, uh, what's it called? Burst or whatever, the Blacephalon one. I feel like that's something people will just do if they have a free turn and that's their prime, that's their only GX attack. How often that one prize GX attack comes into play, I'm not sure. Like, I feel like not that often. But, you know, this one is too, but it does have a higher cost. So, I feel like this is something to look out for if I had to guess, just comes up short, but definitely a lot of potential. All right, Mega Lopunny and Jigglypuff GX. First off, for a Mega, 
that's a little underwhelming. <laughs> but I love this card. Again, all those tag teams are so strong. So many strong GXs. And, you know, there's some non-GX stuff that also has a lot of potential. And then this thing can just punish those first two categories. Uh, we're going to hit the GX first because I don't think it's that important. Puff Smasher GX. That's a funny name. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now asleep. If you have at least four extra energy, it does 200 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Um, I don't like the idea of needing five energy. That sounds kind of high. It's not an evolution, so you can't use triple acceleration and as well. So I'm not crazy about that. But the Jumping Balloon is has so much potential. So again, three energy. You can't use triple acceleration. So kind of awkward. You do need to, but you know you can just. Uh, you can turn to this with Welder. So, uh, Jumping Balloon, 60 plus damage. This attack does 60 more damage to each of your opponents for each of your opponents' EX and GX Pokemon. I feel like this is straight up a tag team that is built to take out uh, like Mewtwo decks. Actually, no, this thing punishes the Dene more than anything else, in my opinion, because the Dene is like, oh, well, I can just leave this on the bench, and if it gets knocked out, it's only two prize, not the end of the world, and basically this allows me to go through a lot of cards in my deck and toss some stuff in the discard. Perfect for Mewtwo Mew. But Jumping Balloon, basically, this will ramp up for each the Dene you use. So full bench. <laughs> full GX bench that is 360 damage so you don't need a lot to basically make this thing insane um, this is just a very interesting card I feel like this is and the fact that it's color is actually very nice here you know you can basically uh, tech this into any deck to punish uh, Dedene and Dedene is so strong right now the fact that a regular GX card costs $40 is insane all right, next we have Sil Valley, a very interesting card drawing engine. This is like a Rangaroo 2.0, so it does evolve from Type Null, but it does come in at 210 HP. And I will say, I think Sil Valley compared to Rangaroo, this guy can stand on his own if he needs to. Uh, but let's take a look. Disc reload. This is the primary thing we're looking for. Once during your turn, before you attack, you may draw cards from your deck until you have five cards in your hand. So if you're basically uh, before you drop your supporter, um, you know, something that just nets you, nets you cards. Or there's a lot of supporters that now you discard cards. So you actually, sometimes you, uh, when you use a supporter, you actually net less cards, but you get some kind of advantage. Uh, but then you basically reload to five. So sometimes you use it before, sometimes you use it after supporter. Um, if you need to fight with this guy, it's not the end of the world. Bra Buddy Brave. I like how it is just straight two colorless, simply a DCE. You're always going to use a supporter. Uh, so this thing essentially does 120 damage. Not bad. White Knight GX, your opponent's active Pokemon is a Ultra Beast that is knocked out. Um, I feel like this thing could come into play. It's definitely a threat, but it's kind of very situational. So it's a Valley, card draw, and can fight if he needs to. Alright, let's get to some interesting supporters. So the new tag team supporters are coming. Uh, the... So these are kind of interesting. Uh, this one I think has potentially interest or some potential. I hate the regular arts. Like this is just so lazy. I did a different video on this and yep, can't stress that enough. Super lazy art. But Cynthia and Caitlyn, put a supporter card from your discard pile into your hand. And then when you play this, you discard one card if you do draw three cards. So essentially this is you play this in a discard a card, you net four cards, one of them being a supporter. I think this is pretty good just to make sure you constantly string your supporters back to back. Uh, so I feel like this card is just, um, yeah, you get some card draw out of it and then you basically set up next turns for certain prison, um, prison decks again. Maybe this is something just to make sure you can get back certain supporters and keep using uh, the supporters to work your the mechanics that you're trying to or the strategy you're trying to execute so i feel like this thing is kind of like all rounder will fit in most decks and you know weak card draw but you get your supporters back and then the second uh tag team supporter that i found really interesting is red and blue again super lazy art but i do like the idea of red and blue i think the alternate art looks amazing uh let's see search your deck for a jx pokemon that evolves from one of your pokemon in play and put that on your pokemon evolve it uh, you can't, so it's still, you can't use this on the first turn you play it. Shuffle your deck. When you play this card, you can discard two cards. So, you know, when it came to like that Sylvalley, you know, I feel like this card actually plays pretty well with Sylvalley, but, um, so 
this time you're you're losing three cards from your hand to use this full strategy uh, but then that's where any worse of value can come in play when you discard two cards from your hand if you do search your deck for two basic energy cards and attach them to the pokemon you evolve so this is some welder level ramp uh, we're going very much in the opposite direction compared to Welder. We're losing more cards instead of drawing them. So, and that, but this does have the built-in tutor up the evolution and evolve it. So, Evo Soda plus a terrible Welder, or just we'll just say Ramp, but it costs a lot of cards. Again, I feel like this is really nice with Savali. Let's say you use this and you wipe out your whole hand, but then you bring out the Savali, load back up to five, and Savali can already attack. So I feel like this card has a lot of potential, you just need to make sure you have enough cards to execute with it. And that ramp may be uh, really relevant in a lot of different things. The key here is that it's only for Pokemon GX. Uh, maybe this is where like the evolution stuff can come into play. Like, you know, you, you only have so many Eevees, uh, I guess you can use Ditto as well. Uh, but then this is just a way to get those GXs on the board. All right, this thing is insane i saved this for last it is absurd how strong this pokemon is i feel like this is going to this will be the meta once this card hits all right reshiram zekaram gx reshiram is back <laughs> with a new buddy i guess uh Zek or Zekron's back too. They ditched Pikachu, they ditched Charizard, they're teaming up, and they got N there too, and this thing is so strong. Alright, 270 HP, it's pretty standard. Thunder, actually we'll hit the GX because I don't think this thing is that good, because 4 energy, 2 red, 2 lightning, 107 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. If you play N's Resolve, it does additional 170, but this is only for bench. Um, Mew, alright, this thing's done or non-relevant. All right, Thunder Flame Dream, interesting name. 90x damage, discard up to three, any combination of fire and lightning energies from your bench Pokemon. This attack does 90 damage for each. So the only thing is you can't discard the energy from Reshiram Zekrom, but that's not the end of the world. Um, I feel like Naganadal, like Reshiram Zekrom, Naganadal, Jirachi. Basically, Drachis to just enable this and then get Reshiram out there, get three Naganadals on your bench, and that is 270 damage every turn, basically guaranteed. And it's very difficult to disrupt that. This thing is at 270 HP, so yeah, you need some way to knock that out. And then, like, you can pick off the Naganadals, but they're only one prize, and there's just not a lot of ways to do that. And that's what puts Reshiram Zekrom GX at the top of my list of cards to watch out for in the new Cosmic Eclipse meta. So, um, as always guys, let me know what your thoughts are down below. Do you see other cards that you think are going to be very important that I haven't listed? Or let me know what your thoughts are if you kind of disagree with any of the points or if there's other ones that you just want to pull for a, for a collector's uh, point of view. And um, as always guys, like, comment, and subscribe all down below. I'm Awana Turtle, and I'll catch you guys next time.